In this video, we're in Microsoft Excel, and I want to show you how to use a drop down list to retrieve data from a specific sheet. So, for example, I've selected Northeast here, and it's picked up the data from the Northeast sheet. Okay, let's see how we can do this. Now, to begin with, we are only going to retrieve the totals on each of the sheets, and the first step is to get a drop-down list which displays all of the sheet names in your workbook. Now I've created a list of those sheet names on a separate sheet. So I click into the cell where I want the drop-down list to appear. Then I go to the data tab on my ribbon. And in the data tools group, I'm gonna click on the data validation button. In the settings tab, go to the allow menu and select list. Then click into the source box. Then select the sheet where you have your sheet names and select those sheet names. Click on OK and now you'll have your drop down list. The next step is to work out the syntax that Exo uses to refer to a cell on another sheet. So I'm going to say equals, go to the East sheet, and then select the total actual value. Now, if I go into that cell, I can see the way in which Excel refers to another sheet. It's the sheet name followed by an exclamation mark, and then the cell reference. Now, rather than hard coding the sheet name in, we want to use the value selected in cell B1. So I want to refer to B1 in my cell reference. Now, because I'm using a text value within the cell reference, I have to use the indirect function. Indirect returns the reference specified by a text string. Now I need to join B1 with the rest of this cell reference. And to do that, I use the ampersand symbol and then I have to put the rest of this cell reference in quotation marks because it's going to be treated as text. If I close the bracket, you can see it now returns that total actual value. If I changed the area up here to say south, it would return the total actual value for the southern region. Let's just check if that's true. Yes, it's the same value as I've got down here. What if I select a sheet name that has two words with the space between the words? Then it doesn't seem to work. Okay, let's delete our formula and let's manually refer to a sheet where the sheet name has two words. And let's see what syntax Excel uses in this instance. Well, you can see that Excel uses apostrophes around sheet names that contain a space. So we need to incorporate those apostrophes in our indirect function. Indirect. The apostrophes go in speech marks. Ampersand. We're not hard coding the name of the sheet into our formula. We're referring to B1. And we join that with the rest of the cell reference in quotation marks. So now I can select any area in this drop-down list and it will return the relevant total actual value. Now I want the same for total budget and total variance. Let's see if we can copy this formula across. Well, I'd need to fix my reference to B1 before I do that. So I click into the B1 reference and I hit the F4 key at the top of my keyboard. If F4 doesn't work for you, you can type the dollars in. Now, if I copy this across, I get the same value for budget and variance, and that's because I'm gonna need to manually change this B11 reference. So to do that, I can just change the B to a C, and then the B to a D. Now, if I change my area in this drop-down list, I get all three values from the relevant sheet. Now, in this second example, I want to retrieve the actual budget and variance values for each department. And I'm going to use a slightly different method to the previous one. 
I want to use a lookup function. I'm going to use VLOOKUP, but if you have a more recent version of Excel, you could also use XLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP. I'm looking for the value for the advertising department, comma, within the northeast sheet. My table array is going to be this range of cells here, A4 to D10, which I'm going to lock using the F4 key on my keyboard. You can see that puts the dollars in that table array reference. Comma, col index number will be two. I'm retrieving values from the second column within the table array, comma, and I want to do an exact match, which is false. Close the bracket, press enter, and it returns the advertising total actual value. Now at the moment, if I change the area in my drop-down list, it has no effect on this value. And that's because northeast is hard-coded into my table array reference. So again, I can use the indirect function to use the text value in B1 as a cell reference. So I put quotation marks around that apostrophe. Then I put an ampersand character. Northeast, I'm going to replace with this cell reference and then another ampersand character to join it with the rest of the range reference. I need to put speech marks at the end of that range reference and then close a the bracket for the indirect function. If I press enter, it now returns the value for the southern area. Let's see if this works though, if I change it again. So for the west area, total actual expenditure for advertising is 11,895. Let's see if that is true. It is true. Now, obviously I want to better copy this formula down and across this table. The A4 reference needs to be locked on column. So I've just got a dollar before the column reference. The B1 reference needs to be locked on column and row. So I've got a dollar before the B and the one. Now if I press enter and copy this down, that'll work fine for total actual. But if I copy this across, it doesn't work. I just get the same values for actual in the budget and variance columns. And that's because you have this col index number, which is hard coded into our formula. Essentially that two needs to become a three for the budget column and a four for the variance column. Now I could go in and just over type these values and that would do the trick. But an alternative way would be to use the column function. Column returns the column number of a reference. So the first column number I want to return is two. So if I click somewhere in the second column of my worksheet, say B1, close the bracket, press enter, then I can copy this down and copy across and the same formula works for all of these columns. So to explain how that column function has worked for us, if I go into the budget column, you can see that the column function is now referring to C1, which is the third column. And in the variance column, the column function is referring to D1, which is the fourth column. So it's automated the col index number for me within the VLOOKUP formula. Let's use our drop down list again, just to make sure that this is working and it appears as though it is. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully that's been useful for you. If it has, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.